With the increasing trend for these rather dubious looking lithium jump starter packs on eBay, another thing has appeared and it's just deletes for them. And this one came from a seller called uh, Always Best Under Stroke UK. They're not in the UK, it's, it was shipped from China. And it cost £1.59 plus 99 pence shipping. You're thinking, oh, that's a bit dubious. It seems so cheap for what you're getting. Now, at some point, I will test some of those lithium jumpstart packs. But before I do that, I'm trying to find something I can actually load them up with. Because ideally, I'd have a 0 to 1,000 amp or something like that test load to actually, you know, grill them to their maximum ratings. Well, having said that, some are quoting currents of 2,000 amps. I mean, you do the maths, like cable insulation, um, connector insulation, uh, voltage drop, contact point uh, resistance. That's not going to happen. But uh, yeah, they're just doing the bogus figures. But once I've uh, finally found a tester, I'll, I'll actually do that. However, in the meantime, I'll point you in the direction in the description down below of Jerry Corner, who's a, a millwright in Canada who uh, has been testing these with a device called a carbon pile tester and he's been cranking the current up very very high and the results have been interesting in this sort of way you'd probably predict however I'll provide a link to Jerry and his sidekick Tomcat uh, down below in the meantime I bought this because I want to know what's in the box what's in the box Miss Fox so uh, the cable, it says 10 AWG on it, uh, 200 degrees Celsius. It feels silicony. The clips are super robust. Uh, I did try clamping one on my finger just to see if I could... Uh, yeah, it, it's really, really springy. I decided that was a terrible idea because it left dents in the finger. Uh, the cable that's going into it uh, looks coppery, but... Oh, let's, uh, let's get the magnifying glass in and zoom in as well, actually. When you look at the cable, it looks coppery, but it also looks a bit silver in the end, and I'm guessing that's copper-plated aluminium in there. And likewise, the coppery contacts at the end happily accept a magnet, so uh, they're probably steel. However, this is not what we're interested in right now. What we're interested in is in this mystery red plastic slug, which I hope isn't solid. I hope it's hollow. Oh, it's flexing, it's hollow. Uh, so what's it going to be? I'm guessing maybe a thermal cutout? That's the first thing that comes to mind, or maybe some active electronic circuitry. Keep in mind these are rated for hundreds of amps. Um, it could be a fuse. I don't know. There's only one way to find out. So make your guess and we'll open it up. So I'm going to... Uh, it, it, I'm not sure if this is sealed. It, it looks shiny, as if it's been glued or ultrasonically welded or something, but uh, I'm going to stick this spudger in and see if I can get it in the first place. Although, if it doesn't go in easily... Oh, it has actually gone in easily. I was going to say, if it doesn't go in easily, I'll pause and I'll... It's opening. And I'll uh, split it open using violence, but uh, it doesn't look like violence is needed. What's inside? Is it just a wire link right through? Ooh, that's interesting. Let's zoom back in. Diodes. Dual pack Schottky diodes, probably. Uh, what's the number? Uh, you could probably read the number better than I can right now, owing to the fact that you've probably got a bigger image. LT8203, and underneath it says SBL2040CT. It's got the two diode symbols suggesting, well, this is just composed. Is this steel or is it a. Uh, no, it's, it's not holding a magnet, so it's probably brass, tinned brass, maybe. And uh, it's got the tabs of the diodes, the common tabs, soldered to one side, and it's got all the, the eight pins here of the other ones. So it's effectively just eight uh, diodes in parallel. Um, let's test this. I wonder what the forward voltage of these is. I'm guessing they're going to be shot key diodes, so I'm just going to zoom back out here. We'll bring in the meter. Any guesses what the forward voltage is going to be? I would say if they are Schottky diodes for the minimum voltage drop, it will be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, maybe. If they're silicon diodes, uh, it will be closer to 0.61-ish. So uh, let's test. 
that is really low. That's barely over a tenth of a volt. That's the lowest forward diode drop I think I've ever seen. Uh, to elaborate, diodes. I'm going to check these up. I'm going to get the data and see what they are. But uh, diodes, there are a few characteristics you have to consider with diodes. You have uh, the standard classic diode symbol. The main characteristics you have to uh, consider when you're choosing a diode are current. The classic 1N4001 type thing is going to be 1 amp at about 50 volts peak inverse voltage. Peak inverse voltage means uh, the maximum voltage it will block trying to go in the wrong direction. The one amp is the current that's rated to handle continuously. Um, these ones will be very high current, but they won't be rated for in this application for continuous use. The other characteristics you have to consider with diodes are uh, the voltage drop across them. Typically with a diode, it's around about 0.6 volts because it's a, a diode junction, the perfect diode would have zero voltage drop. It would appear as a wire link, but that doesn't happen. Um, but what they've chosen here, they seem to have chosen diodes with the lowest voltage drop because ultimately that just results in heat as the current flows through. And the only other really significant characteristic usually with diodes is the speed, switching speed in this case, it doesn't really matter, but will probably be quite high. And that's the speed at which, you know, if you're feeding it a sine wave to get rectified, um, the faster that sine wave goes, uh, traditional diodes like the 1N4001 are only really rated for low frequency sort of uh, rectification. As soon as you go up to the sort of switch mode power supply uh, rect rectification, you're talking potentially hundreds of thousands of hertz, hundreds of kilohertz, and you need a diode that can that can recover fast enough for efficiency. So um, I'm going to check these up now. I'm going to see what they are because uh, I'm quite intrigued to see why that uh, forward voltage is so low. Obviously under load, the, the forward voltage would probably increase a bit, but um, that's intriguing. One moment, please. I have found the data sheet and also a slight correction because I've reviewed the first part of this footage and I screwed up slightly. I was talking about the uh, resistance of the leads and I kept saying insulation for some reason, and quite frank, although insulation certainly has a resistance, hopefully a very high resistance, it's not quite the same thing. So what I was trying to say was that these packs that quote things like 2000 amp output current, if you consider it's all low voltage, around about 12 volts at best, because the voltage will drop under load, and you've got the battery with its internal resistance, you've got the switching circuitry and control circuitry, you've got this connector, you've got the resistance of the leads, you've got the voltage drop across the diodes, and then you've got the contact resistance at the end. It all adds up, and theoretically, even if the 12 volts stayed around 12 volts and you drew 2,000 amps, the combined resistance of everything would have to be in the region of 5 milliohms. That's going to be quite tricky. However, getting back to the original subject, which is these chunky little diodes. These diodes, and keep in mind, there's four packages, two in each, so there's uh, eight diodes. Each one is rated 10 amps continuous, presumably with heat sinking. In this case, they're probably seen closer to five times that, maybe about 400 amps. Um, but that's okay because these uh, diodes, like all diodes, have a peak rating. For instance, the 1N4001 I mentioned earlier is rated 1 amps, but will handle peak surges of about 30 amps. And the reason that they have to be able to handle that is for things like, um, say for instance, the charging of a capacitor through a re rectifier, that there's going to be an initial surge of current into it. So they've all got a peak rating which is basically rated on once a half of a main cycle. However, in this case, it's a, it's a balance in the middle, and they've just basically jammed as many diodes as they could in this small area. And they're relying on the fact that the operation of this will be for a fairly short period of time. Um, that said, there will be people who ignore the instructions and they clip it onto the uh, car battery. Uh, activate it and then they go and because they're so desperate to get to work they just turn the ignition key and just hold it there grinding away uh, so this could get quite hot maybe that's why these leads are sold as spare replacement sections maybe the diodes do fail although normally i would expect a diode to fail short circuit they could fail open circuit they could desolder themselves um if they did fail short circuit the only clue you'd have about that um easily would be if that this didn't get warm in use. Uh, you could check it with a meter, it would be a, a visual, physical dead short. If you went from the output of the red crock to the uh, red connection in this plug, uh, 
If this was faulty, it would show a dead short in both directions if it had gone short circuit. So, um, yeah. The forward voltage of the, this pack, though it was very low, under full current conditions, well, with the rated current, 10 amps, it will rise to about 0.6 volts, that it says. And also, um, I'm guessing that as the current goes higher, the voltage will rise a little bit more, so there's going to be a modest drop across that. Uh, the voltage rating is round about 40 volts. It's sort of nominal uh, rating, so it's well rated for the 12 volts-ish that it's going to see, or less if the battery still get a bit of charge in it. So yeah, interesting. It just appears to be to stop the battery feeding back into the power bank and that's it. But um, yeah, interest to see what's inside anyway.